Hey guys, welcome back. It's Brad here with uh, my my friend Squeaky Chair. And um, anyway, I just wanted to say um, that this video is going to be a little different than a, a typical video of mine. Um, I started off doing um, like a demos on like how I created um, like how to do a non-representational painting. And then I just thought, that's, I don't want to do that. Um, I had a video, you know, making all the mock-ups, kind of the prep work for it, and then actually making the uh, non-representational painting. And I just thought, well, then you're just watching me do a painting, and you're not really getting the insight into what I'm, I'm thinking or what I'm, you're just seeing, like, that the product of, of something um, that's deeper inside of me that, that I'm experiencing. And so um, sometimes it's kind of hard to, to think about and to um, explain. And so I'm not going to show you like that, me actually making the, the painting in this video. I want to just kind of share maybe how this painting um, happened. So going back into some of the deeper roots. So this video is really going to just be like a little bit of a story time. And if you don't want to hear that, you can certainly just stop watching this video right now. Uh, but if you're interested, uh, stick around and you can always, you know, stop whenever you get bored or whatever. Okay? So anyway, uh, hopefully you enjoy. And if you like this video, uh, let me know and I can make more like this and I can explain, um, you know, some of my thoughts and um, you know, how, I'm, why, how and why I, I make, make my work. All right? So anyway, we'll get started with uh, with my story time for my non-representational painting. So here's um, the painting I did today after um, reading a book last night, or at least reading part of a book uh, last night. And the book I read last night was 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 this, "The Raids on the Unspeakable" by Thomas Merton. So this first chapter. And um, anyway, um, I just kind of wanted to share, like, even how I got there. Um, I would say about, you know, 12 years ago or so, I was in a used bookstore and I just uh, stumbled across a, a book. And there's this book right here. And it's called Angelic Mistakes, The Art of Thomas Merton. And being an artist, I have a little bit of a, of a art book collection of different, of just books by, of different, um, artists and stuff and so I kind of have a little library um, which probably sounds outdated now with the internet and all that <laughs> but um, back in the day people used to use libraries and I still like libraries and be able to read through the books um, you can actually find stuff that you're looking for a little bit easier than on the internet um, at, least, at least I can anyway so I, I like to if I see a book and this book was I think under five dollars and so um, I knew nothing about Thomas Merton. I didn't know anything about it, but about him or whatever. Uh, but I just kind of looked, opened the book, and I was like, "Oh yeah, these are like some kind of um, abstract um, kind of ink and brush drawings." And I was like, "It's worth reading." And I always like, and I really like books like this. Um, just anyway, like that have like a little kind of description. Um, or insight from the artist right here, and then you see like a, a painting. It just makes for a, a very enjoyable read for me, where you get just a just a touch, a little insight into what the artist was thinking at that time, or um, a writing. And Thomas Merton is pretty, he's more well known for his writings than he is for his art. Um, but I didn't know that at the time. <laughs> I just uh, I thought, oh, I always like to see you know like hear what artists have to say, and. Um, Anyway, ironically enough, you find out, and I didn't find out until, you know, later, uh, that Thomas Merton was friends with Ad Reinhardt, who's a, a more famous um, abstract expressionist. Uh, so there you go. So that's, a, that's a side note. But anyway, I found this book, and I, I basically, um, as soon as I found it, um, I didn't read it. I just kind of looked through it, and I kind of just had it in my studio and then uh, I was visiting with an artist friend of mine and uh, I just thought and I always like to I mean with my friends and stuff and 
far as I like to just give books away. I, I do it a lot, um, or at least I do it to a certain degree. Um, and I just I gave um I gave him the book. I hadn't read it. And I just kind of immediately just felt weird about it. I was like, you know, I I probably I don't know anything about Thomas Merton. I don't know anything about the art that he, that he did. I just I basically spent just a couple minutes looking through the book at the pictures, and so I went online, and um, I ordered. Um, some of his books, and one of them was called Seven Story Mountain, and the other one was um, New Seeds of Contemplation. And uh, I read those, and they immediately, um, I mean, so some other things that were going on too, but they had a profound in impact on my life. And, um, and it changed my art too, in fact, uh, it, tremendously, and so much that a lot of people really really saw a, a huge difference in there and I'm, maybe it wasn't a good one but they they, they noticed something was different and um, and anyway um, my friend he ended up not liking the book which is fine with me I, he gave it back he's like that's nah, not for me um, and so that's cool but um, what was great for me was um, not whether I have the book I mean it's cool I have the book but um, that I got to discover something else uh, kind of like through this kind of angelic mistake sort of kind of way, if you want to think about it that way, where I was just like, oh yeah, these books, and they were, they're so influential. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you because last night as I was working on uh, this demo for you guys, and I was, I was videoing, you know, how I was, you know, the process of me making the, the actual abstract or the non-representational watercolor, I... I just like I stopped I paused and I just thought you know what this isn't it's not what I want to do and so I read so I picked up this book and so I picked up uh, Raids on the Unspeakable and I hadn't read this um, in a long time you know probably like 10 years or so but um, I had it I had some of these Thomas Morton books and like um, you know Seeds of Destruction and stuff and, and I wanted to like maybe like, read some of these other books that seemed like relevant uh, for our times but these are they're long and I just thought I don't want to uh, that much time but this short this book's pretty short so I was like this is doable I could read this here pretty quickly and so you know after you know reading it and you know again it's got those cool this is, just finished my chapter so that's my bookmark um, but it's got these little little drawings in there uh, and they're pretty short chapters which I, I like like short short chapters anyway but um so i read this chapter and it's called rain in the rhinoceros and it just seemed um to really speak to me and um it's just kind of good reminders of, of things and not that i agree with everything that tom smart's ever written or everything that i hope that goes i hope people understand that right um but i think today i think there's less and less understanding of that anyway that's why i like to throw that that out there it's just like you know don't I don't agree 100% with everything that he says but I, I do um, I did like like that chapter and I thought it it was interesting and it, and it started influencing my painting and I, and I could see it happening I could just see it and so it was like kind of light in the area up here and it was just getting like really heavy and I started using um, gouache and going over it and just kept getting a little darker and darker and I think part of it was just Kind of like how we're just feeling things today and just with our climate and our and in the, in the world kind of at large it just seems in our in our country just a lot of a lot of heavy stuff going on right now and so um you know that's why I, that's why I, I picked up that book because I, I mean he addresses that in that book and some others but um i wanted to um anyway i just wanted to share that with this with you because that's what kind of happened in here. And I just thought it was kind of interesting. It was like kind of this encroachment on this kind of light. But it's, it just seemed like there's like some really heavy parts. But there's lights. And it's this kind of idea of like kind of this redemption in here a little bit. Now, um, anyway, so I think I'm going to call this one Raids. Uh, but it's not representational of anything. Like it's not, um, I'm not trying to depict anything in nature other than a concept and an idea and some real emotions and stuff that we that we all feel so anyway um i just wanted to share that with you and share this um this painting with you i haven't even signed it yet i just pulled off the, the tape 
Um, so that's not even cut out of the book yet, out of, off the block. So it's still in there. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just wanted to share that with you guys. And hopefully you guys, um, and the reason why I wanted to share it with you is because um, everything that you do um, can start to influence your art and um, the things that you kind of expose yourself to and to and, and that you, the things that you consume. Because we're all consuming stuff. It just depends on like kind of what you're, what you're doing. Um, you know, so... Um, anyway, so whether it be nature or your TV, media reading, um, music, all of that stuff starts to influence your, your work. And I just thought it was kind of interesting. It seemed to me like it started at some point, it kind of switched, um, like from me just kind of playing to where it was like, oh, okay, I am still playing, but the things that I'm thinking about are really starting to pour out, like even subconsciously, like they're starting to pour out into this work and I could see it like a visual, um, of representation of the things that I was thinking about and the, the thoughts that I was feeling and the ideas that were in there. Anyway, I just kind of wanted to share that with you because I know sometimes people um, wonder like, how do you do abstract expressionism or how do you do like non-objective kind of work? And, um, you know, sometimes it's, it's more than just formal qualities and understanding like this makes a great painting if you do compose you put this red splotch of paint right here in the sweet spot or whatever it is um sometimes it's it's more than that and it's like intuitive and very personal and expressive and so i just i just want to encourage you guys and i hope that you guys have fun uh, making your uh, non-representational art or whatever kind of art that you guys are doing if you're in my if you're in my beginning watercolor class that's what that's what this was uh, for so if you're in my beginning watercolor class, um, you know, maybe just uh, find a, a great book that you like and um, spend just some time, like some quiet time and just like be reflective on kind of how you're feeling um, and and pour that out on onto that onto that paper. And then, by the way, in our class, we have two of these watercolor blocks so you can work on one. And then if that one's not, you know, work on another one, you might want to work on two at, at a time. Um, so anyway, take care and you guys have, have a great day and a great week and we'll see you next time for when we start our still lives. Okay. Take care. Bye.